So you guys remember all the reports out there that the Xbox Series X is like a, basically a space heater in your apartment. It is going to melt things down and overheat and all that jazz. And it turned out that these reports were completely made up. Uh, the person who originally stated this, it was a joke. Uh, just because there's some slightly warm air coming out of the top of the Xbox Series X, this is going to be true on anything. And I talked about this before because PCs, uh, you know, I'll put heat in the same way. And how I actually really like the cooling design in the Xbox Series X, how it sucks in air from the the back panel on the bottom and also a little bit from the, the actual bottom of the system, and then exhausts it out the top, running it over all the components pretty evenly. I feel like this is a pretty standard uh, PC-like cooling design. Design, and I think the Xbox Series X, uh, considering the clock speeds it runs at and the power it packs in it, would be just fine. Now, I saw the PlayStation 5 teardown, and while the heat sink is massive, and while they are using liquid metal, I didn't actually like the cooling design of the platform because the way that it vents out the air is like on this two-sided thing, these vents on the top, and the fan, the way the fan is designed, it can't actually blow air evenly out of both sides. So it kind of leaves it almost choked a little bit. And now we have some, you know, quote-unquote unconfirmed reports coming from notebookcheck.net that actually states the PlayStation 5 runs hotter than the Series X. And remember, the PlayStation 5 does not run at the same clock speeds as the Series X. It runs at, like, less clock speeds. So to have a, a platform that runs at higher clock speeds but runs cooler than a platform at lower clock speeds, that means that the cooling solution the Xbox Series X is using is actually more effective than the cooling solution being used by the PlayStation 5. And the Xbox Series X isn't even using liquid metal, which, by the way, my Xbox Series X will be using liquid metal. Stay tuned for that because when I get my in before I even turn the system, well, maybe I'll turn it on once. i got to confirm it works. I don't want a DOA system and then assume I broke it. Uh, but I will be putting liquid metal uh, in my uh, system. Stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing a video. It's going to be great. I might have the first liquid metal you know heat transferred system in the world but uh let's get into this because um i need to let you guys know the temperatures are not up for either platform are not at these levels that you need to be concerned but i do find it interesting that the playstation 5 does actually run hotter uh before i get into that we are giving away a playstation 5 an xbox series x or a nintendo switch also two copies of pikmin 3 deluxe head down in the description to uh, Head down into the description to find out how to enter. Also, we're on our road to 100,000 subscribers. If we can hit 100K in 2020, I'll we'll have a massive $1,000 plus dollar giveaway happening in January. Also, why not head over to our Twitch channel uh, because we will be streaming not only our podcast over there, uh, but also a lot of other streams happening as well. Uh, Nintendo Prime TV, we'll have a link to the, that down there as well. Also, we're, I think, at like 56 or 57 subs over there. If we can hit 100, there will be some Twitch sub exclusive giveaways. Also, hey, look, you know, we're giving away a couple $20 eShop gift cards over on our Twitch in a future stream this week. All right. So, the PlayStation 5 runs hotter than the Xbox Series X. Okay? Let's get into this. All right? Because we have three next-gen systems to look at. We have the Xbox Series S, the Xbox Series X, and the uh, PlayStation 5. The all-digital or the disc version it doesn't really matter because the disc drive it adds ne negligible heat to the, the whole equation. So, we don't really need to worry about that. And it's not being cooled by the cooling solution Anyways, all right, so this was written by Daniel R. Deacon, uh, and it goes out here and it talks about the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and all that. And let's get into, let's get into this. So uh, the PlayStation 5 runs at 65 degrees Celsius, uh, which is the peak, okay? It, it runs at an average of 55 degrees, hits 65 degrees, okay? That's pretty warm, 149 degrees Fahrenheit, would be very hot to the touch, maybe even scalding, but it wouldn't necessarily uh, be abnormal. Uh, my 5700 XT, when I overclock it, I'm hitting peaks of 80 plus degrees Celsius, which is perfectly fine and not within, you know, it's not going to crash. Remember, this is the peak. This is what PlayStation 5 runs at. It's pretty warm, but it's not so warm that you need to be worried about it. Any traditional gaming PC is going to run much toastier than that are laptops, even with lesser components, because of the restricted airflow and the smaller heat sinks tend to run all significantly hotter than this. That's why it could feel even really hot on our laps. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind as we talk about this. 
Uh, so the Xbox Series X, which, which has less powerful components in it, is actually the coolest of the three. It runs at an estimated 47 degrees Celsius on average, 116 degrees Fahrenheit with a peak of 58 degrees Celsius. Not surprising. It's got a massive fan. It's got a good heat sink, but it's also the least powerful. That's not really that big of a deal. The Xbox Series X runs at 52 degrees Celsius or 125 degrees on average with peaks at 62 degrees or 143 degrees. So there's about 6 degrees Fahrenheit difference or 3 degrees Celsius difference between the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, which again runs at 65 degrees Celsius at its peak uh, with a 55 degrees Celsius average. Again, we have, have looked at this before, and I, all, I actually wonder, um, because they didn't include liquid metal in the PlayStation 5 uh, just on a whim, because liquid metal has its own issues. It tends to not last as long as traditional thermal paste. It tends to get hard, and it could crack, and there could be issues that make the PlayStation 5, for those people that aren't comfortable tearing down systems and replacing thermal paste, it could make things uh, much more uh, difficult for the PlayStation 5 to have a longer shelf life. This is before we get into SSDs and that they have a limited shelf life as well. But, you know... I wonder, what were the temperatures without liquid metal? Because the Xbox Series X doesn't have liquid metal. So with liquid metal used on the Series X, would the differences be even larger? Because liquid metal, as a thermal conductive, is better than any other thermal paste you can use. So it will transfer heat to the heat sink better than anything else. So with traditional thermal paste, what do the PlayStation 5 temperatures actually run at? Why do they need to use liquid metal? Is it possible it goes over 70 degrees Celsius with normal thermal paste? Let's just say the PlayStation 5 is a hot boy. And I've I talked about this on Twitter. I didn't make a video about it because I don't want to seem like I'm just hating on Sony. It, it feels like every time I talk about PlayStation, it's like a negative story. And I hate that because I'm actually looking forward to the PlayStation 5 and the exclusive games. That Demon Souls, mm, Miles Morales, mm, like these games look great on PlayStation 5. Even though uh, I might have to wait a month. I, my PlayStation 5 is coming from Canada, so it, it's going to be... There's a lot of, I live in the U.S., so even though it's just north of the border, it's pretty difficult to get PlayStation 5 over the border and to me in a reasonable amount of time, especially with COVID. But, you know, what's interesting here, since I'll have the Xbox Series S and X day one, is looking at uh, how Sony's cooling compares to what Microsoft is. Microsoft, they are going with almost maximum airflow, right? There's holes in the bottom of the system and then there's holes at the bottom back of the system where all the IO is. And all of this is used to force airflow over the components, every component in the system, including the big heat sink, and then exhaust it out the top with that huge, which looks like 120 millimeter, 140 millimeter fan. We'll have to get exact dimensions on that. Uh, and then obviously the Series S as well uh, has a really huge fan. The PlayStation 5's fan is big, at least in comparison to other platforms of the past, but it's smaller than the fan that uh, Microsoft is using, but it's also a different fin design. So it kind of has a lot more fins in it in comparison, but it seems to not push as much air, or at least I shouldn't say that. Maybe it's just that the air looks like it's choked off. I, you guys tell me. I, I'm not an engineer, but I do know when I've when I've looked at different PC cases and I've you know explored different varieties of airflow that the PlayStation 5 looks like it's pretty air restricted coming out. Like the actual room it has to push air out of the system does not like like there's like these indents on both sides, but the fan can only blow one way. It can't blow both ways. The fan doesn't blow both ways. Okay. So the fan isn't positioned where it's pointing straight up, where it could suck air up on both sides of the thing and blow out, you know, both of those little indents evenly. That's not how the fan is. The fan is positioned sideways, which means air is only going out one of those vents. So the other event is completely aesthetic and doesn't it doesn't affect anything, which means there's very little room for air to get out of the system. Uh, I know that they talk about how, oh, the, look at the ventilation on the back. There's plenty of air to come in, which is true. But if air can't escape once it comes in, that means the platform is running hotter. Now, this doesn't mean PlayStation 5 is going to overheat. It's not. These temperatures are nowhere near Silicon Deltas where you need to worry about overheating. At least we don't think so, of course. Uh, these temperatures don't say that they're um, being ran in like the worst case scenarios, like in a hot summer day out in Arizona where it's 115, 120 degrees and people don't have AC in their house and then they're running a super intense AAA game uh, for three hours straight and seeing what, what the temperatures do and seeing if the platform can handle it. Again, we're not saying saying that these are put in the most extreme real life situations by the way this happens but i do think that uh temperature wise we're not going to need to worry about either of these platforms the series x or s 
Uh, let's just be fair. Let's include that in there. Uh, or the PlayStation 5 I run at temperatures that are anything worth noting. I mean, Microsoft even came out after the whole, oh my gosh, you know, it's like a furnace thing coming from the Series X. And be like, uh, the temperatures are like exactly the same as the Xbox One X. And literally nobody complained about the Xbox One X. So what's the problem? I think you know, a bigger issue is going to be you know noise. And right now we're hearing from uh, people that, that have an Xbox Series X or at least a developer unit of Xbox Series X, you know, that's not final hardware, uh, that, you know what, the Series X is pretty whisper quiet, despite that huge fan. Is the PlayStation 5 whisper quiet? I don't know. We, we have some uh, independent reviewers or YouTubers, I guess, out in Japan that have units, but, you know, it's in Japan. Uh, and details are kind of scarce for us here in the English-speaking world. So uh, we'll see when the actual uh, English reviewers get their hands on it, what, what happens, at least in our neck of the woods. Because, again, I don't speak Japanese. It's been really hard to follow, follow Japanese coverage of the PlayStation 5. But, yeah, I'm. all we know is PlayStation 5 is the biggest system yet. Xbox is much more compact. Uh but it seems to have better cooling despite not using liquid metal. So i very curious what the PlayStation 5 would run like without liquid metal. In fact, I almost want to de-liquid metal the PlayStation 5. Does that make sense? Like take the liquid metal off, put normal thermal paste on and see what happens. Um, let me know down in the comments if you would like me to do that. Because I'm putting liquid metal on the Xbox uh, one, the Series X. Would you like me to not like to de-liquid metal and put normal thermal paste on? Wouldn't that be weird? Like make the thermal conductivity worse just for the sake of a video? But then it feels like I'm targeting because like I'm making something better with the X, making it worse with the, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Or maybe like I should rip off the vents and try to try to fix the PlayStation Five airflows problem. Like should I go in there and like modify the chassis and fix the airflow problem so it has even better airflow and gets lower temps? Again, not the temp, the temps aren't even that bad as they are. I could do nothing to these platforms and the temps are just fine. But I don't know. I like doing funky things. Maybe you guys have some crazy ideas I can do to the, to the S, the X, and the PlayStation 5. What crazy modifications or, or changes would you like me to make to those platforms uh, right when they arrive at my house so I could do something crazy and unique on this channel that's not just about the games, although we'll obviously be looking at the games and, and comparing feature sets and operating systems and personal preferences and controllers because we're, we're finally moving away from the traditional DualShock design and that really excites me for PlayStation because one reason why I don't play PlayStation platforms is my hands cramp too much on the DualShock design. Anyways, we'll get into all this when it comes out. I'll also grab an old, uh, I think I have a DualShock 3 or 2 controller laying around my house. I'll grab just for comparison's sake to show you what I'm talking about with my hand cramping. Um, it's a PlayStation 3 controller. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Nintendo Robo Jazz from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.